So hey everyone, Christina here. Today I'm going to be talking about how you can identify the ideal customer for your mental health brand that connects with the topics you're best at. Let's go. So first and foremost, your ideal customer is not everyone. You need to focus on a group of people that you want to serve the best because you can't speak to everyone. It's impossible. You need to start small and then work your way out if that's what you wish. And this is a common mistake that people make in their daily practices. And it's okay. This is the old way of marketing and trying to get out there in today's society. So now this is the new way of looking at things and how to stand out in the market in front of a small group of people. Even though many people come to you, mental health professionals, you know, talking about anxiety, talking about depression, family issues, relationship issues, etc. You need to focus on one topic that you're the best at. So if that is anxiety, stick with anxiety. And the people that you're serving that have issues with anxiety, that's your group of people that you serve 100%. All right, so we're gonna start with step one, and that's brainstorming. So tune in with yourself and ask yourself, what problem am I trying to solve? So through your brainstorming session, keep this in the back of your mind that you want to create a brand that is authentic to you, but it needs to resonate with the people, the small group of people that we talked about that is going to speak to them, but still speak to the authentic, true you. It's really important to find that connection between you and your ideal customer because that's what's going to help you thrive. And this is why everybody says to niche down. It's very important because you're going to be able to serve a certain group of people and become really good at what you do to then be able to expand yourself more. At the same time too, because you've niched down to these small groups of people, your ideal customer, you're able to serve them best. You're able to understand and take the time to learn about their struggles, learn about you know, what are the things that they want to work on or improve, and you're able to serve them 100%. Where comparing to trying to speak to everybody, there's no clarity there. You don't know where to begin. You don't know where to finish. You don't know who to serve next. You're just jumping in different areas. So you want to make sure that when you're niching down, you pick one ideal customer and that customer, let's just say, has, you know, issues with anxiety when going out in large groups of people in the community or that have social anxiety or something like that and you want to stick to that certain problem so that you're able to you know fully fledge into that topic and come up with ideas to help them resources content uh, any type of services that you offer and when you do that, that really helps to find clarity, right? Instead of trying to speak to all these different people, coming up with all these different services, but have no idea how to just pick one or where to begin. You're stretching yourself thin. That's basically what happens when you're trying to serve everybody. The idea here to finding your target audience is to really think about you as you in the past or you in the present so the target audience should be a form of you whether it's you in the past 
that was struggling to find you know themselves or what they wanted to do with their career or the future you know where they would like to go and you know either be an inspiration or an influencer anything there or an alternate form of you meaning that let's just say you wanted to be an artist and be an influential artist that could be your alternate form and a great example would be for me so i am a designer and illustrator but my alternate form would have been an art therapist because i do have interests in art therapy and i could have been an art therapist but here i am now helping out you guys because that is my alternate self my other self i guess you could say but this is what i mean when you're picking your target audience you want to pick somebody you know that was a form of you usually they say a form of you is the easiest because you already experienced that for yourself so you're able to provide the training or you know the the guidance that this individual needs and the reason why I say that is because you can resonate with those people in the easiest way and you'll be able to provide them with so many different resources because you've been there. So yeah, in your case, as mental health pros, I would see you guys picking your past self as one of your ideal customers because you've already been on the path that they've been and you know how you went through it and how you healed and the techniques that you've used so you can play up on that and be able to speak to the individuals that you're going to be serving when you connect in this authentic way you're really able to understand you know what your ideal customer's desires are, pain points, challenges, what their goals are, or any other things that they would want to improve on because you were able to focus in one area of need. And that is so important in building your brand and expanding yourself in the future oh as well as speaking their language because you're going to be engaging with them a lot you're going to be talking to them interviewing them asking them questions doing surveys with them because you really want to get to the bottom of everything that is coming up for them instead of diving into the demographics so the demographics would be, you know, their age, their gender, where they live, what school they went to, what their interests could be. You want to focus in on the psychographics and the psychographics go way deeper into what the emotional sides are in this individual because the demographics, they just skim the surface. There's nothing more than that. So the psychographics help to dig a little deeper and really find what the pain point is. So in my example, as a designer, right now in terms of the people that I'm working with, the biggest pain point right now that they're trying to find is clarity and alignment. And that is really significant when you're trying to build a brand. You have to have clarity and alignment or else your brand's going to fall apart. So other great examples of psychographics is basically, you know, where do the, these people hang out? Online or in person? And you want to meet them where they are. Now that's just that's just an aspect of marketing, but 
it's important to understand where they normally hang out because you want to be there for them. Another thing here is what are their fears? What's bothering them? Or what's preventing them from getting to that next stage in life, right? You need to get a good understanding of what fears are coming up for them and how you can help. Also, there's limiting beliefs, which is a huge one, especially for going to a big step in life as well. So if there's limiting beliefs that are holding them back, maybe that's something that you can address. Also, on a psychographic level, you can choose to go the way of values. So what do these individuals believe in? What do they value in life? And that's another good way to connect with your small group of people and figuring out who these people are. You know, do they value social justice? Do they value empathy? Do they value organization? There's a lot of different aspects that you can use instead of demographics. So step two, survey your existing customers. So if you have existing customers and some that are your favorites, I'd say ask them. Ask them what are they looking for? What are some of the pain points that are coming up for them? What do they value? An idea of what their personality is like. And this is how you can tap into some psychographics already with the people that you already have in your network. And I say when you're serving your favorite clients slash customers, definitely ask a lot of how and where questions. These questions will help you get really good in-depth answers. So ask how they found you because from there you're able to use that as an anchor to help find more like-minded people just like that existing customer. Number three, dive into your analytics. So analytics gather a lot of data, especially the ones on social media or your personal website. And looking at these analytics, it'll give you a really good idea of who is coming to you and what their demographics are, psychographics. And this gives you an idea of what more people do you want more of. This is a great tool for you to see who you're currently serving and who you want more of. Another thing that you could do, especially on social media, is you can dig through the social feeds of your customers, you know, get a good idea of what they like, what their interests are, you know, what problems are coming up for them, or what are some of the things that they have in their environment. Those are super important too if you're trying to create a certain culture. What topics do they like to talk about? What events do they attend? Really important one, what kind of content do they like best? Because this is where you're going to tap into that. So if your customer likes Instagram wheels videos, then you're going to be right there creating content in Instagram wheels because then that individual is going to see your your work, your information, and you'll be popping up consistently in their feed. Step number four, social listening. So not that many people listen lately, but it's so important to do so. And what I usually recommend is you filter through your network of customers or just in general filter through uh, any social media platforms you know finding the topics that you're good at and searching on what people are talking about in terms of those topics or questions that people are asking in the comments or posts or videos anything like that because that can help you craft what you can build or what you can create in terms of content 
to talk about. And this is a great way to find research on your ideal customer. Filtering through the comments and posts that you find in any social media feeds, make a note of them and see how you can come up with a solution to that problem. Whether it's a free resource or anything in terms of services that you provide, these are ways of brainstorming and these are ways of collecting data that you can use to help build your brand and business idea. Another thing that you can do on social media or any other social media platforms is to join groups. So joining these groups, it gives you an insight on what questions are coming up and another way of social listening and how you know they are speaking and you know what are some pain points that are coming up within these posts and discussion boards that are coming up and how they are being addressed and this is a great way to listen to your customers tactic because you're socially listening even though you're not replying to these people this is you taking notes. This is you doing your research. This is you digging deeper and seeing what the deeper problem is. And then this is you now coming up with ideas on how to build your brand out and where you want to focus. Step five, create a customer profile. So after all the research you've done, you know, looking through social media, uh, any surveys that you've done, brainstorming sessions, analytic data that you've went through online. You need to filter through that and look through all of that when filtering and see what sparks joy. See what resonates with you because you don't have to do everything. You need to figure out what you can do the best. And the things that resonate with you you can put in the customer profile because like I mentioned before, your ideal customer is a form of you. And you guys are both like-minded people and that's how you can serve them the best. Crafting this ideal person that you wish, you wish to serve, again, should be somebody that you have a special bond with and that you'll be able to build a relationship very easily. So the person's interests, challenges, or occupation are where you need to focus your energy in these customers and the topics that come up when filtering through all of this research that you found. The question that you need to ask yourself is, is this topic something I can be the best at and keep asking yourself that question every time you run into a new topic because this will help you filter out what you're not the best at so that's it guys that is pretty much the five steps into figuring out and identifying your ideal customer and if you have any questions feel free to comment below and also I can provide a little template of a customer profile sheet that you can fill out yourself to help you figure out who this ideal customer is and I can also link that below. So thank you so much for sticking around in this video. I know it was a little bit of a lengthy one, but I appreciate your time. And I hope to see you around for more of my videos. Have a good day, guys. Keep smiling. Bye.